Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Portalarium Conference Room. We are engaging a little crafting. I'm Rustic Dragon here with Stephen Adele and Lord British, of course. There. He needs no introduction. But, uh, and we'll soon be joined by one more. But, and, and indeed, Scott Jones should be here in just a moment. But before we continue, uh, we have a disclaimer. There may be, this, this broadcast may not be suitable for uh, viewers of all ages. There may be alcoholic consumption in this broadcast, so viewer discretion is advised. Yes. Uh, but what we are here for today, uh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, is we're here to uh, actually hand finish the royal warrants uh, that we will uh, that we are uh, have already given out some, and we'll be giving out more to uh, guilds and other uh, community uh, leading groups that are that are doing great service for the community and for the game. Uh, uh, as you can see, we're going to build a little assembly line to go around here, and uh, uh, they were actually laser cut. Uh, to get them all very precise and, and accurate. You have one of the ones that's laser cut without the paper on it? There, it uh, there we go. And, uh, uh, and this is what they look like right after they have been uh, laser cut. Uh, all one, uh, they were the wood color plus uh, the gold that comes in on top of it. But we wanted to also fill in and paint in the uh, colors of the uh, new Britannian arms in the center. Uh, and so uh, we've left on uh, we had them shipped to us with the protective film on top uh, to allow us to do a little bit better paint by numbers. Uh, and we thought we'd have fun uh, chatting a little bit with you today and uh, uh, filling in uh, uh, these painters. We're going to do this the semi line, have the real artists do the detailed hard parts, and uh, by the time it gets around to me, uh, do, uh, do the, uh, uh, the easy part. Uh, so uh, so uh, the red has just been done on. Uh, Stephen on the first one, and uh, uh, Rustic, what are you going to do? You're going to do the okay. silver? i got dibs on silver. Very good. I'll do blue. Do you want to fill in for Scott doing uh, sure. some yellow? But if, uh, if, uh, uh, if it gets around to you before Scott arrives, take over. Uh, Jeff, if you guys already know Jeff, uh, another one of our key artists. He does a lot of the avatars and creatures and such, you and your team. Uh, but... Uh, uh, that's the thing, Rustic, you might ought to do. To, I guess we, since we're doing a broadcast, we do have the ability to even see what people, uh, unfortunately, really talk to us. Yeah, it's a one-way conversation. No I one's in the, is, is manning the chat rooms at the moment. So if I asked, uh, I think Gina's at lunch. Mm. Uh, but I don't, yeah, well, no one's currently manning the chat. Ah, what I can do is I'm going to bring up at least my Twitter feed. How's that? So if, uh, uh, if anybody tweets at Richard Garriott, uh, I should uh, see it. Well, I'm behind on a few. I haven't been on there much today. Uh, but uh, uh, in any case, I'll at least be able to see some questions if people uh, uh, have anything they'd like to talk about. Otherwise, uh, we're just going to have a conversation and um, uh, talk about these royal warrants. So, uh, so Richard, who yes, sir. gets royal warrant? What is a royal warrant for? And so, where does the term royal warrant, warrant come from? Excellent. Excellent question, Stephen. Who, who uh, I don't know. <laughs> who warrants a warrant? Uh, well, we actually borrowed the term royal warrant from uh, the old world. Uh, in particular, I'm sure they were common in a lot of uh, uh, European countries, but uh, most familiar with it, of course, uh, from England. Uh, and, uh, and in England, the, uh, the crown, uh, most recently the queen, uh, if there was a company that was creating a product or service uh, that was su such high quality uh, that it was suitable even for consumption by uh, the uh, by, by by the royal family, uh, then they would often give a royal warrant to that uh, business, and uh, and it really basically meant you know if you were the uh, by royal appointment to to the queen, uh, you know you were the dressmaker. It meant that you know you were somebody that uh, you know made dresses of such high quality that you were either endorsed by or sold directly to uh, the crown. And people would put those royal warrants on their businesses, uh, and it was often a way to kind of uh, drum up extra business. And so we have borrowed that, and we've done things like, um, uh, for example, uh, the College of Arms, a group that uh, uh, you know uh, has really helped us out a great deal by uh, helping us to not only uh, determine the codes of arms for all the players who have earned that privilege, but have written a tool by which those codes of arms can be directly imported into the game, and even a way that we can parallel and code in the game to bring those arms uh, all the way in. Another group uh, that has received a war warrant is the Poets uh, Poet Circle, uh, 
Um, you know, and the really cool thing about the poet circle is that uh, while um, uh, uh, you know while we were struggling with how to get enough music uh, into the game and the music of the right style of the game, uh, we were having trouble finding routes, that, frankly, that we could afford uh, that uh, had to do the composition. Uh, composers uh, of uh, both the right style, quality, and cost that we could bring in. And the Poet Circle organized uh, the player community and found a way to really uh, help us uh, uh, approach that problem much more um, intelligently or more uh, uh, successfully. Uh, how to successfully uh, get feedback to the players, who the community who wanted to participate. And, uh, and ever since, the Poet Circle has been helping us to manage the onboarding of music. They've, uh, we went from batting zero to batting a thousand. So literally, uh, you know, well, a, I agree. A, almost overnight success. Yes, the uh, music in the game is fantastic. And today is actually a special day because release seven yeah. is out. Exactly right. So if any of you uh, aren't already playing the game, uh, obviously uh, uh, it, it's up and live now. All of you that are backers uh, can uh, get in uh, starting today, starting this morning. That's right. Now, it's a certain level of backer that can get in and be playing our game. It is. I don't remember the exact uh, amount. First not... responders and above. First responders and above. So it's about $35 or so. So, so if you don't have a Kickstarter pledge, then a, 45, 40, a $40 founder pledge or higher, a $45 benefactor pledge or higher, or an original Kickstarter royal founder pledge of, I think it's $25 or higher. Right. Clear as mud, right? And we have been in pre-alpha playable since mm -hmm. December 2013. Uh, when did we, is that when we actually left the first game? Right. 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 I think it was yeah. right around, yeah. I thought it was January, I thought it was right was after. January? It was right after. Right, right after, okay. yeah. So I mean, that's the we were working through. That yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were getting ready for it. We were crunching through that. Yes, exactly. I remember the first release happened when I was still in Indiana. Yeah, it's, right. it's pretty amazing. Yeah, that we just have the interstellar, right? It's just the interstellar. Okay. For six All months now. All right. In it's the pre-alpha phase, and our <laughs> community is. Uh, I'm on blue. On the right side. Uh, coming along with us. I won't be sad. I won't be sad. Don't be blue. My theory of uh, Van Gogh. Yeah. Is the reason he had a blue period. It's because blue paint was on sale in the market. He had to buy a lot because he was poor. And it has nothing to do with how sad he was. He just bought the economy of paint. And did you I actually think that's true? <laughs> I think it's pretty fair to be true. I mean, everything else is just yeah. has to make. I mean, art historians would be angry at me, but no, that's uh, that's okay. That's probably accurate. It's pretty valid. It's a valid theory, is it? Yes. And, uh, and and this is Van Gogh you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, was there a period where literally he only painted in blue? He did a heavy blue set. Yeah, it was a blue period. It's a sad period. I don't know if that was before it's or after Scott the Jones. Ring, though. Hello, Mr. Scotty Jones. Welcome to the party. Thank you so much. I got you right here, uh, Mr. Jones. Have you done here? anything? I was your your uh, filler. Oh, you the filler? And I didn't do nothing, so I didn't do it wrong at least. <laughs> <laughs> Since uh, we do have the disclaimer, uh, would you like to to have a? a, a, a would you like to to yeah? Uh, I'm going to at the same time as you. That way, you guys know it's real love. No. So, like, I'll let you guys. Yeah. Do, you guys are doing you, you could have a shot of deliciousness before you go. Now we're doing really good. Is this the tempo here that we're dealing with? I think they'd appreciate that. That is the tempo. Um, yes. Okay. So, and uh, you're going to be yellow here. Oh. But versus grab a new one. This one is this one was our Good non protected job, one. So just set Thank that one you, It's a semi line. He's gonna put on red first, he's gonna silver second, I'm gonna put on blue third, and then it's gonna go to you for yellow. And oh, I see. Unless, so, Scott, you really want silver. If you really want it. If I great. really, really can you tell me what I want? What I really, really want? I think you I really, 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 really want a zig a zig But I could be mistaken. <laughs> so this is the non protected one. And yeah, this is uh, sort of a sample, and that's a sample. Yeah. Well, and pardon me if we go silent here, listeners. Because we're all painting. Yes, I know. Intense concentration. But it is proof. This should be good demonstration that we really are creating. Right. So one of the things I use to steady my hand <laughs> I when I'm painting is uh, alcohol. Glenn Morangy. Mel. Glenn Morangy. Come join the party. Come on in, Mel. 
Come on, Mel. Come right. say hello. So, so like the thing that's really you. awesome is that you can't paint. Look, you can paint at least as well as I can. Did you, did you finish your red? Because if you're not finished yet, then I'll, I'll begin the yellow. I'll begin the yellow now. Sure, why not? Okay. Is there any reason not to? Well, it's because we were going in order, but it doesn't. It really doesn't matter. I was just trying to avoid all the back and forth and who needs what, but I give up <laughs> because uh, I see that we're all going at widely varying speeds. All right. So, so this one, this one is partially done. This is the one where uh, they got the call and they said, "Hey, make sure you leave the sticky paper on so we can paint on it." Yes, it's uh, like brisket, but it's actually masking tape paper. This is harder than it looks to keep from overlapping that little fine line. Oh, yeah. Well, and we it's need to. Easy. I'm assuming we need, we need double coats because. We do. Well, you know, that's what Stephen said, too, but, you know, my wife, at least, has a vote of one. She much <laughs> prefers kind of the uh, old worldy, a little more faded look. Mm. And so, uh, <laughs> yes, you're right. To make it look like a brand new modern world thing, two coats. But. Uh, I at least don't think there's something to be said for one coat. So, community, who knew that when uh, we talked about Royal Warrants, they the would be hand painted by Scott Jones, Stephen Dinelli, and Lord British himself? <laughs> and Rustic Dragon. And, and Rustic Dragon. I enjoy painting. I do too. Which is interesting because in college, you know, anytime I would, I was taking when I was taking my art classes before I'd taken painting. I said, I can't paint. I don't paint. I don't like painting. You know, no painting. And then now I love it. Uh, do you want to remove that chair over there so I can sit down? Oh, cool. All right. All right. Yeah. In my old man glasses. And let's pick a color and uh, uh, dive in. All right. What color would you like? I'm actually thinking maybe blue or yellow. Yeah, if you want to jump in on the... Uh, it's, it's going to take some time to go. Yeah, I thought color. blue and yellow was going to be uh, fastest, but it's not. So I will... I'll, I'll, I'll let you... Actually, More I'll space to cover. Okay. And then you can jump in and start doing blue and yellow. So this one is... You got extra brushes? Yes. There's one here. I like the, I like the, the plastic handle ones because they're a little bit smaller. So, well, yeah, I have to have that. Bothers that. How lightweight these so paint brushes are. Actually, yeah. It bothers you that the brushes are lightweight. Yeah, I know. Uh, the case. Picked up a nice. brush in a while and it's lighter like than a mouse. Yes. Yes. Very lightweight. The whack and pen of the avatar. Okay. Don't you use one of the blue the blue goes on the right. So we're our guide. Actually, Scotty, can you put that that guide right back in the middle for us? Absolutely. That's how we have it. Yes, exactly. And, Thanks, uh, does it matter which half? Yeah, it does matter which half. It has to be the right half. And uh, and up to the very first bump that you see, and only up to the very first bump that you can kind of sort of see there. And you want to do your best to stay within the lines and not oh, draw sorry. on the bump. Is that what we're doing? <laughs> Are we staying in the lines? Are we sure? Yes. Because when you pull up the masking tape, it will be acrylic will stick to it. Welcome to the abstract expressionism of the avatar. Is that my hand? You know, someone posted saying we should get your mom in on this, Richard. Oh, that would be that would have been a fun idea. I plan to go see her tonight, actually. Yeah, how's she doing these days? Good, good. We get a chance to chat at the uh, at the Easter thing. Yeah, yeah it's fun. Yeah. Fun hearing her talk about the story behind her, the whole booth. Yeah, uh, you know, exactly. Because you know the whole Indian lore thing was something I did Wait, as a that kid. Was mom? Yeah, she liked yeah, that. Yeah, the so. Indian lady was my mom. Oh, I loved her. <laughs> I was so mean to her. I didn't know. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> oh no. No, actually, community you mean to those little kids. Man. And this. Sword, well, yeah, I was. I'm, all right. I was killing children. That was your yeah, favorite part. That was. Now, the only thing left for here is yellow. If you want to set this to your right, Scotty, that one is now ready for you. Mm -hmm. So, community, on on your behalf, you know, being the, the primary ultimate fan here in the office, I um, I took it upon myself to thank Richard's mom at the Easter event for for Richard. Oh. <laughs> for not for not only, of course, you know, 
for yeah. bothering to have a third child, for, for forgiving us, Richard, <laughs> but for being such a wonderful, encouraging mom. You know, those of you out there yeah. who have heard any uh, ultimate stories about Richard's mom, she is just the, the seems to be the nicest, most uh, encouraging, and you know, in, are just just creative, encouraging parent I've ever heard of. So. I, it's true. I gave her a, a hearty thanks on behalf of me and the entire Ultima community at large for uh, helping Richard discover his all creativity. That. Mm -hmm. She she let us all sleep accurate. on her floor back in the uh, back at the Leonardo's. Yeah, back in Leonardo days. Yeah. What are the Leonardo's? So my mom, you think that, you know, so like the, the companies we build do big projects, right? We do big projects. The haunted houses and things we do are big projects. But I learned this big projecting from my mom. My mom does projects bigger than I do by a long shot. And the Leonardo's is the, the biggest example. So my mom invested, my mom and my dad invested in Origin. And um, and they walked away with some you know a good chunk of change at the end of origin, and uh, uh, so uh, they uh, just you know thought about what they wanted to do with their the money, and they went back to their hometown of Enid, Oklahoma, and you know my father is Mr. Super Scientist astronaut guy, and my mother is Mrs. Artist type, and so they wanted to do something that was sort of an homage to both art and science, and uh, and Mr. Leonardo. Uh, da Vinci it was a big sort of a family icon of both art and science uh, for a long time. In fact, he was the his his uh, uh, drawing of a man in a circle in a square. The Trubian man. The Trubian man is uh, uh, was the central image of my father's uh, uh, patch for his Skylab flight, and um, and so they decided to build this place back in Eden, Oklahoma, called Leonardo's Discovery Warehouse. And what it is, it's a children's hands-on art and science center uh, in this old uh, three-story warehouse that they kind of refurbished, so to speak. But in addition to the warehouse proper, they, in a city block sized space adjacent, they built a city block size multi-story uh, playscape out of you know timber and sand and water. And uh, uh, and the way they built it is they hired a company that would build most of the main parts and cut all of the main wood to size and set the concrete foundations for it. And then they invited in people from around the city of Enid, Oklahoma to actually come out over about three weekends and do all of the construction. And so it was literally built by the community. And But what was amazing about it is we missed the very first weekend. But on that first weekend, the city population of Enid, Oklahoma is 400,000 people. And my mother got 40,000 people to come help build it. Wow. And when we heard that my mother had actually gotten 40,000 people out to do, frankly, anything, you know, that's like, you know, that's like the New York Marathon yeah, kind of scale of, incredible. of people, uh, we said, well, we have to be there. And so we chartered a bus and we took a bunch of us from Origin, one of 20 or 30, 40 people. Oh, yeah. A full, a, a full bus full. And we all went up to Enid, Oklahoma for a weekend, the next time they, the next build weekend. And uh, and we didn't have a place to stay, so we all of us brought a sleeping bag, and we crashed on the floor of my mother's house. <laughs> all of us. And uh, and so we were literally filling the house, um, you know, you know, on the floor everywhere. I mean, it literally was just bodies, you know, wall-to-wall bodies. Uh, and sleeping bags you know, all around the floor of my mom's house. That is awesome. Is that still something that can be seen? Absolutely, today? yeah. So if you go to Enid, Oklahoma, you can see it right now. Yeah, I was wondering about that. I was wondering how that. Yeah, no, it does. It's doing very well. It's still doing very, very well. Those concrete dinosaurs out there. Yeah. Landscape out. Yeah. So how come we never got a Worlds of Ultima uh, Leonardo da Vinci? Uh, I don't know. So now, now the whole... Uh, now the community. But the community has a lot of questions. They're probably asking. Sure, they do. They're asking. Too bad we can't see you. <laughs> uh, but uh, here, I'll go to my. 
Oh, I'm on chat. All right. Uh, Silver snack. Say thank you to Fire Angel, who is, uh, I'm confident, welcoming everyone to the chat room. Oh, is she on now? Fire yes. Angel. Yeah. Fire, Fire Angel. Angel. Fire Angel. Oh, Fire, Fire Angel. Angel. Yeah, Fire yes. Angel is, is our, no. uh, our amazing greeter no. extraordinaire. Yes. Oh, you've got, it. you've got them all queued up for me. Yeah. Um, I've got a pop now. Thank you. Oh, it's like a beer belt of the uh, Pardon? We all just taking turns to make this? Yeah. We're, yeah. Or, yeah. We are in assembly line fashion. Sort of assembly line. Kind of out of sequence assembly line. Yes. Just so you know, do it. Do grab one that doesn't have your color on it and put it on it. That's why I wouldn't let you have my brush now. So, no. What have you been working on? <laughs> uh, some combat. Uh, let's see, cobalt stuff. So, for those of the community that doesn't know, would you like to tell us a little bit about what you do? I started to show up. I'm just I'm an animator. <laughs> <laughs> Mel talks to me about camp and stuff. Yes. And photography too? I know. Oh yeah, Mel's, Mel's definitely a photographer. She's got a full Facebook page for it. And really? Okay. Digital or do you do natural media photography? I don't think so. What does natural media mean? Right. Everything's natural. Well, there's nothing that's not natural. Dark room. Natural. We're talking dark room and nasty chemicals. And that kind of yeah. stuff. They still have that stuff around. They do. I have a friend who does that too. To her, she she just can't do the digital. She doesn't like the digital stuff as much. It's all about the natural stuff for her. Mm -hmm. Natural meaning like hideous caustic chemicals, of course. But right. <laughs> yeah, digital doesn't cool. sound right. Yeah. Digital allows for a lot of freedom that, that I'm sure you enjoy. It does. Yeah, it's nice. Now, see, my father is a professional photographer, and he's also a ham radio operator. Therefore, and of course, this is this is awesome uh, work around here. In Indiana, a vanity plate is like forty or fifty bucks, but a amateur radio call sign plate is up to twenty bucks. Therefore, my dad had his call sign changed to N1KON, which is Nikon, so he could have uh, his vanity plate for cheap. Uh, so my dad is obviously a Nikon man. I'm a Nikon man because of my father. Mel shoots cam. What? I'm an Nikon person. <laughs> I'm a cam. <laughs> However, I cannot deny the pictures the Mel takes. So I can't. Yeah. I just it just makes it really hard. And I'm like, check out this cool lens I got. Uh, here's my camera too. All right. I don't think. Yeah. Okay, there's, yeah. there's, there's one. one. Let's go back into the earlier. Well, I can't go anywhere. There's one coding. Here, I'll switch with you. So I think what we do here is get off topic. That's true. Scotty. Yes, sir. You need to lean into the camera a bit. Let the uh, community know what you do here. Your beautiful mug. My beautiful, beautiful mug. Uh, I you do, make mugs? I make mugs. <laughs> <laughs> I do environment art stuff and, and loads of it, although I also do some user interface and stuff like that. And occasionally I do some concept stuff. Uh, but primarily it's environment art, environment art, and environment art. And right now I'm, I've been doing a whole... Uh, in the past, I've been doing a whole bunch of the series of the promotional items and such for like the the uh, prosperity. Uh, yeah, the prosperity items, loads of those. I also did the the uh, art for most of the uh, of the crafting tables, which are a lot of fun. And right now, I'm making something that's almost a pseudo crafting table. It's the what can you talk about? This? I don't know. I, I'm assuming I can. Uh, I, think I don't know what is it. it. It's, it's, it's the, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, yes, you can cover that. Okay, good. Yeah. I'm doing a magical printing press right now, which will allow folks to be able to print their books in the game and publish them, uh, but also, uh, if everything goes right, they'll make a simultaneous copy of them that they can give to their friends. But the main thing is that it will magically take one of the books that they make and will publish it in the world to allow anyone else access to it as well, if they wish. And it looks like an old-style Gutenberg uh, printing press, but with, with magical effects. So I'm, I'm in the middle of doing that right now, in fact. Okay. I won't confess so that I went outside the lines. Oh. Oh. 
I won't make fun of anybody. But since it is in blue, no one will ever be able to prove it was me because there's two of us spending blue. I blame you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. My soul is pretty good. Paint me like you paint one of your. What's the line? Paint one of your girls. One of your painted <laughs> hussies. You have French. This is live. Oh, yes, yeah, 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 of course. You want to get in and paint, or at least say hey to the community? Actually, it would be really beneficial if you jumped on chat for us and let us know if they have any questions. Uh, I was just in chat. I was talking to about it. I hate to say, but a large percent of your audience is probably He's playing the game by some game thing going on there. Yeah, yeah we have in America case. and uh, Germany. For those watching out there, there's a, a large operation going on to create a maze out of uh, bookshelves and decorations. So make sure and uh, catch up with some people in the game. I forget what town they're in, but it's a quite the book uh, shelf maze going on. That's the first player town, right? Yeah. Thanks, I, Larry. I think Marcelo uh, created a World Cup soccer field in game on this yeah, And now head with a cabbage or something. With a cabbage as the ball. Cabbage. I love it. Ooh. So yeah, that, we that, should that. probably put a ball in the game, right, to let people pick uh, it around. There was there was a secret project that uh, was trying to be trying to get a ball in before World Cup, but didn't quite make it. Yeah, there's just uh, trying to get it working well with physics objects between multiple players. We need to do a little bit more work. We can get it there. It's just there wasn't going to be a, a one hour. Didn't make it for World Cup. Well, you got four years to perfect it. Wow. The only World Cup in four years, and that's not true. That's no, true. Mm -hmm. Really. Maybe tons of other side the World Cup only four years ago. Oh, that's right. And who won four years ago? I don't know, USA? Italy. <laughs> Not USA. Ah, Italy. Yeah. <laughs> My very derisive laugh. Oh. <laughs> oh man. Your lack of laugh of mockery. So Scott Jones. So everybody knows what Chris Spears does, but uh, Scott Jones is also responsible for some for a couple other things in the office. It's very, very important. One, he keeps Bob in check. And two, Scott <laughs> Jones routinely brings in delicious samples of local cheese jellies and also brings us crackers uh, for us to taste and enjoy. Um, and it's become a very enjoyed semi tradition here at the office. Cheese day. Cheese day. Cheese day. I can't take full credit for it because it was something that uh, I was taught to do uh, when I was working for King's Hall for a while. There's a really awesome artist named Jeff Tony who also did Cheese Day, and I was delighted by it because, of course, I love food. I'm a Vermont. Did, does the community know your former occupation status? Uh, I, I, I often have a, uh, a nickname called Scotty Cakes, and the reason why is I used to be a pastry chef, and I used to be a, a baker that made wedding cakes for people all the time. I haven't done that in years, but I do still occasionally bake. At some point in time, I'll be bringing something yummy in. In fact, I also designed, because I was a baker in the past, I also did the uh, Lord British's birthday cake uh, item, which yeah. recently went up for sale not too long ago, I think, right? Indeed, indeed. So those of you out there that are part of the Britannia fans, specifically the cookbook, not the Dragon's Meats variety, um, when Scott Jones told me that something that I had prepared was delicious, I was very, very flattered, because his opinion should count. I do, I do like my food. There's no doubt about that. Pastries, especially. So yeah, that that cake that you see, I made something only that I assumed I could make in reality if I really wanted to. No fakery there. It had to look real. You know what's coming next, don't you? Yeah, people are going to ask me to make it. I already did. I'll help you. Every day, I was like, so, uh, when are you going to make that cake? Make that? Uh, I wish I could see that in the office. So when are we going to have cake day with our cheese? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it is actually uh, Richard's birthday coming up soon. Too bad I won't be here. Yes, no. you won't be here to enjoy a cake. No. Which is my excuse for not having to make it. <laughs> it's not <true>. <laughs> <laughs> Scott is. Your birthday. It's all about time. Same as my grandfather's. Really? And two of my ex girlfriends. They were two girls born on the 4th of July, one and the next girl born on September 11th. Go figure. Oh. Uh, um, so the brackets, the brackets are there. I, just, I need to find someone not born on an auspicious day. Actually, I have. Okay. Do tell, Joseph. Oh, I'm talking about my fiance. 
is born on a very inauspicious day. And Which is now auspicious because it's her birthday. Well, it's true. But I always forget what day that is. Who's silver? You're silver. I'm silver. Only silver left on that one. You can wrap it up. I'll trade. I'll take that. How the hell do I have silver all over me? God. Oh, stay in the lines. Like I'm, I'm staying very well between the lines, but it's all over my pants. Don't touch me. <laughs> And that applies to all circumstances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that every day. <laughs> Don't ever Don't touch ever touch me. me. Don't touch me. <laughs> Can't touch this. Don't face me, bro. <laughs> hmm. 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 A guy named Michael Dubno, who is a cool, gadgety guy. I'll do one more. We'll do one more? To a place no, called, I have coffee. Right up uh, outside of New York called Fire Island. To just hang out, relax. Fire Island? Yes. This is some kind of adventure place. It's, uh, yeah, it's not just a little, um, uh, Community, you know, it's like you can go to the Hamptons and things, and you know, it's up in New York. Uh. It's near. It's in that same direction, just uh, another another such spot. So no adventure, but fun. No adventure. It's actually, it's a place you you have, you have to take a ferry to get there, and then in the summer, the island, which is only a quarter mile wide, but it's many tens of miles long, it's basically sandbar. Mm. Uh, there's no vehicles allowed. So a lot of people like it because you can let your kids roam free and there's no one going to run them over because there's no cars. There's really no way to escape because you have to get on a ferry. So uh, so there's no, like you don't have to worry about them like being stolen or run over. Right, or anything. exactly. So it's pretty, pretty safe. Cool. It's pretty safe. People don't buy a lot of bicycles. Yeah, that'll be right during RTX. Yes, that's why, you know, uh, I actually would love to go to RTX. That's where, you know, Star and others are going to go to RTX here. That's my one thing I wish I was here for, amongst the reasons I wish I were here. Another is I just like to be in Austin. But. Now, so is, is it going to be use a family going out to the island place? So Kinga and everything? Yep, Kinga and everything. Oh, that's cool. This is the first time out at the beach? Uh, no, she's actually, last summer she went there, too. Oh, cool. She'll be two this weekend. Wow. Oh, that's awesome. What's her newest thing? Uh, her newest thing is she sort of started figuring out, quote, vehicles like uh, scooters. And she doesn't know it. She's going to get an electric, little battery operated car like thing. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. A white what? Mini? A white Mini Cooper. Mini Cooper. That's awesome. This is uh, this was like a little forerunner. Oh, nice. You know, she's, she's already mastered her scooter. What's cool about the uh, kids and me? It's the same size as the adult. <laughs> also runs on a rubber band. They both run a rubber band. I remember I used, my first car was a '95 Geo Metro when uh, the first winter hit Indiana. Of course, the battery was put. I said, "Hey, Dad, I need a new battery." He said, "Hands me a big rubber band." He goes, "Here you go." I laughed, and he handed me a diesel. I was like, "All right, how many does it have? How long is this gonna go?" And I missed that car. I called that car the new. What was your first car? Okay, Here. my first car was my brother's Subaru hatchback. And I bought from them before I went off to UT. My first original car was a Mitsubishi Starion. Hey, it was cool, man. What was my car? Starion? I've never, I've never heard of it. Either. Yeah, it was their all-wheel drive, all-wheel steering sports car. So, what was your favorite car ever? Uh, 
See, I sold my card before I moved here. I missed my car. I'm very much in big trouble right now. It's not my car so much as driving. I said the Porsche Cayenne was my favorite, I think. Porsche Cayenne. So it's a little pepper. Yes, exactly. And uh, what's interesting is, you know, post origin sale, I did the classic computer nerdy go buy some fancy sports car thing. Did you regret it some of it later? <laughs> yes. And, you know, I, I owned, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost embarrassing to say, I mean, because it sounds, it sounds so indulgent, and yet it's, you know, it's a too bad story. I bought, uh, I had a uh, uh, Lamborghini, and uh, and what I loved about the Lamborghini, the one thing I liked about the Lamborghini, <laughs> or my favorite story about the Lamborghini was, this is when EA was doing the very first Need for Speed. And they wanted to film some real cars. And so they wanted, they had to go, they looked around the company, see, like, you know, they wanted a Porsche, and they wanted a Lamborghini, and they wanted a Ferrari, and they wanted all these other things. And I was, I owned this Lamborghini, and Chris Roberts owned a Ferrari. And, uh, and I had the professional drivers go out and drive our cars for these film sequences, and then when they get them back, my car has, they'd blown the clutch on it, basically. And oh. it cost me something like 15 grand, which they did not pay me back. Um, because it's kind of hard to prove, you know, what happened, although it's obvious what happened. Um, but um, uh, that's uncool. It is uncool. <laughs> but the, the part that was cool, though, was you know, there's this part at the beginning of the game when you select your car. You, know, you select Lamborghini, or you select the, the Ferrari. So if you like selected the Ferrari, which was literally Chris Roberts' car, literally his car, uh, they said, "No, oh, the Ferrari's really good." And they gave all this, you know, kind of things. And click on my Lamborghini, you could say all these good things about the Lamborghini. But importantly, on the a Ferrari one, when it said all these great things about it, it says, you know, really fast, all this kind of stuff. Not quite as fast as the Lamborghini. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually part of the description. <laughs> so it's like, ha, 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 gotcha, Chris. <laughs> um, but I have to say, though, on the reverse, the, the, the reason why I'm saying it actually wasn't that great a purchase is not only if you drive a car like that, can you just not drive normally because you can't like go up and down out of driveways and gas stations without scraping the bottom of it? Uh, must be near ones. Must be near ones. This is a while back. And uh, but also at that time, uh, it was always in the shop. And when I mean always, I mean it came back from the shop with reasons to go back to the shop. And I just didn't take it back to the shop immediately because I just gotten it back. And I would wait until enough other things had broken, which didn't usually take long, <laughs> before sending it back to the shop. And um, that was a joke, right? It go zero to the shop in five, yeah, five seconds. Yeah, five seconds. And then, and then I thought, oh, maybe I just got a lemon. So when they came out with their newer all-wheel drive version, I traded my first one in on a second one, and plus a bunch of like more cash, and had at least the same same kind of problems again. And so uh, that was it. That was the end. That was the beginning and the end of my. You guys spend too much money on a sports car. Which yes. kind did you have? Uh, no, this was the after Countach. It was Lamborghini uh, uh, Diablo. Diablo. Oh, I love the Countach. You had a Spider too for a while, didn't you? Uh, Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi Spider. Yeah, yeah. That was. I remember that was a nice one. Yeah, the Spider was uh, the 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 two generations later than the Starion. It was actually kind of the sequel. Sequel, sequel. Mm. So the moral of the story is don't buy that. Oh. Uh, tragically, yes. Hey, you want to take this one out of the center now that we have enough? Mm -hmm. And that way, whoever's got one that is mostly painted can put it in the center. All right. I'm actually, at least dry enough to peel it off. And uh, let's see if we can get a reveal before the end of the show. And I'm ready for a blue if anybody gets done with something needs some blue. Since the tube is painting blue. Oh. Yeah, that's oh. well. Oh, very good. Thank you. Assembly line is going well. Or assembly heap. So Mel, you drive a car, is that right? I do drive a car. <laughs> <laughs> what is that a joke, Mr. <laughs> I'm from the Northeast. Uh, where in the Your Boston -ish? Not really. I mean, I kind of get off the more north, so occasionally I, I say my words funny, apparently. That's the only <laughs> word I've ever heard you say that made me go with one. Well, I see, uh, instead of beer, I say beer. 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 How about pie? Pie, yeah. Although, it sort of sounds like you know, I'm telling my kids to use the pie. Go use the pie. What kind of kids you got? Human? 
<laughs> Boys, girls? Uh, I have a daughter. And how old is she? Two and a half. She'll be three in September. Oh, we met her. We met her briefly, didn't she? Didn't yeah. Yeah. Ohio. Yeah. Yeah, she was so sick. She was sick that day that you brought her. <laughs> yeah. She's sassy. She get that from you. I O as in I O. I O. As in the moon. The moon yeah. I O. That's cool. Jupiter's moon. As in in out. Well, and also like there was a goddess I O too, right? Yeah. Yeah. From which the new moon was made. Indeed. Yeah. Was she a goddess of? Was she a was she she, nature goddess or something? I said where she got goddess was. She was um in some stories she was Zeus's lover who like uh, I think how it goes is something happened and um he like made her immortal or something like that so that way she'd watch every all of her loved ones die around here. She, wow, so pissed him off. I know, right? <laughs> So like guys like, were always pissed off. It sounds like something Hera would do to her. Okay. Let's see what we can do here. Oh, yeah. The blue, the blue just starts getting soaked up, doesn't it? Is that what's happening? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying to do it really into it. That's why uh, Stephen was saying for you multiple coats. Multiple coats in there. So community, uh, if you ever get to see one of these in person, uh, feel free to send a message to community at portalarium.com and tell us who did the best. Tell us. Uh -oh. I'm in trouble. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's blue. Yes, that's Obviously right. Blue. Obviously blue. Obviously blue. Usually I drive beaters, old trucks or cars, because sometimes people in nice cars will piss me off, and I like to veer in their direction <laughs> in my beater, <laughs> get them to calm down, get a little perspective that there's not the only one on the road. Uh, that was actually when I worked for Microsoft. Um, in Seattle? Yeah. I drove a... Got a 94 Ford Explorer two door. I don't think I ever washed it. It had mold or moss growing on top of it. And whenever someone would get a little uh, obnoxious on the road, especially on campus, I made a point of just going right for them. Steve, the enforcer. Well, I just, some of those people drove it. Out of hand. I think they would take left turns from the far right turn lane, and you know, I ride a motorcycle. To... And whenever someone gets too close to me, especially in California, I had no problem kicking their car. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like <laughs> that. <laughs> you know, I, I I have a friend back in Indianapolis who is a bicyclist, not a motorcycle, but he he said he just his solution is to punch cars. He, yeah. he just he just punches cars all the time. I only did that one time ever. Look, it hurts. Um, and, uh, yeah, I had never said it boot down, so it was okay. Yes. I used to write Only it hurts when the person in the car actually pulls out a badge. <laughs> so, uh, when I moved to Austin, I anticipated that I would be driving in traffic quite a bit. So, I decided to get a nice car, and actually, my first automatic. Yeah, actually, I do like it. It's very comfortable. And drives very well. Yeah, I drive an Audi now, too, and I also really like it. 
Is it in here? No, it's not. I knew that was coming. I was waiting for someone to say it. Just waiting. Just waiting. Didn't have to wait long. No. Scotty, you drive a. What's it? I drive a. I drive a, a Toyota Rav Four. But it's an older one. It is. It's definitely not what I think of when I think of a Rav Four. Oh yeah, no, it's a '97. It's an 87. Uh, but it still goes like gangbusters, let me tell you. My dad. <laughs> for another one, Richard? Yes, sir, I'll trade you. I inherited it from my dad. And he he did lots of lots of research and consumer report guides and all kinds of stuff before he made his decision. And his decision was a wise one because I've never had a vehicle run so flawlessly as this RAV4 has. Now, your father is the same gentleman who has made us realize we never in our lives make a duel. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah, that's right. So I think I, I really I have come to trust your father's research. Yeah. My what, dad what did your father do about no dualies? My you dad thing a dually like you put a thing in the bed of your truck? Uh, yeah, you see well you seen the dually where the, there's literally like the, there's four Bounce. wheels on the back. Yeah. No, well yeah, he he was dad was an avid camper and he, you know, it was all about, you know, getting the camper and from at the end it was a fifth wheel, fifth wheel trailer that he right, right, towed. Right. And so he considered getting dually wheels put on the back of, you know, he considered getting a truck with dually wheels for, uh, for the sake of seeing if it would help him tow anything. Like, you know, what what are the benefits of having dualies? And when he actually did the, the comparative research, he found out that the difference between how much weight a, a dually and non dually could actually bear safely and well was negligible. It was like literally like less than 10 pounds. It was something completely or, yeah, close to zero. Yeah, it was close to zero. I mean, and or it was you know maybe different. It was like fifty pounds. Well, that's kind of like that. people with air. With air, my brother likes to fly airplanes, and you might think that an airplane with two engines would be safer than an airplane with one engine because if one engine failed, you'd have a second engine. But as it turns out, that having a second engine also means you have twice the probability of at least one engine failing. <laughs> and with when one, one engine fails, it can cause other cascade of problems that over that overtake the fact that you have a second engine. So uh, it's not safer to have an airplane with two engines. Yeah, that kind of research, you know, my dad was king of that kind of stuff. But then again, he was sort of like the love child of Archie Bunker and Colonel Potter. Mm-hmm. You can imagine that. That's that's pretty much the personality that my dad had at all times. Wow, you're you're going for broke on that coat there. Well, it is very nice. Because we were generally thinking one coat and come back when it dries, but you are not. Uh, you're not taking no for an answer on that. You're you're going to have the single nicest blue section of all of them. <laughs> Whoever gets yours is going to be like, damn, that blue be fine. That's, what That's exactly That's the words you're going to get in your mind. Yes, exactly. <laughs> So the moral of the story is four lanes is too cheap to pay someone else to paint all the road on so, so. No, no, I think this is our way of saying thank you to the community. Exactly. I, I think so it, supportive. It would be cheaper to to hire somebody else to do this, but yes. Yeah, I guess, I guess it, it would be. be. <laughs> what, what is what is everyone's time mark here? A gazillion. Minus prices. Stephen Colbert's words, gazillionaire, Richard Perry. <laughs> Any other open solars? Ah. So, Richard, do you have a pilot's license? I do not. I have a hang glider pilot's license. Ooh, that sounds like fun. What well, requires a license to fly? Uh, well, I've got a license. <laughs> <Weird>. <laughs> I didn't know that it required a license to hang glider. I haven't actually done it in forever, so I don't remember what the law is. I just thought it was sort of a sporty thing to do as opposed to. Like, you know, are you a licensed pilot? I said hang glides was the coolest thing ever as a kid. We used to do it, me and Greg Dykes and Dave uh, Santre, Greg Dykes meaning Dupre and Santre, uh, used to go hang glide together till, so Dupre cut his thumb off with the table saw. Oops. Would you have to write that before him? Thank goodness. Which I didn't, but no, I wasn't there. It wasn't me. 
but I did get it put back on. And uh, he's, he's not too much the worse for wear now. He has Franken thumb. And his thumb is an eighth of an inch shorter. The width of a saw blade. Didn't augment it with his toe. No, no, he put the original one back on. Yeah. Which is pretty amazing. All things. And yeah, his, so his thumb was off his body for you know a few hours. You actually don't put it nice. No, really. No, you don't put it. <laughs> no, no you wrap it in a cool, damp uh, cloth or uh, paper towel. Just keep it cool. If you put it nice, it likes to get too cold. Um, so uh, well, just pop it in the microwave and the hospital. Yeah, I'm sure that would help. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So he is uh, just not. Does it does a stump prevent him from hang gliding or? Oh no, we just we just all got out. We just got such a long hiatus that uh, you know any flying sport you need to be doing pretty regularly to be safe. And. It's uh, got nice certificate skydiving. Sorry. So you need a certificate to go skydiving. I'm a skydiver too. Another thing I haven't done in a long time, but used to do all the time. Oh, we, but we did do the eye fly thing last year. That was yeah, awesome. That was great. I intend to go back there again soon because that was a lot. Is it back in Aminate? Aminate. What do you mean, Aminate? Cobalt. Oh, wait a second. Did not release you from your sequester. Hey, I did like total. I did like one really dark blue. Yeah. You did one. No, I did two. Thank you. I think. I think. Yeah. Well, send somebody else. The other victims. Send in somebody else. I mean, volunteers. Thank you, Mel. <laughs> trying to think of what other fun stories you fit into. Where was the last place that you vacationed? Mm. I can start off with that. Oh, yeah, where'd you go? The last place I went, and it was quite amazing, was Bali. Mm. That does sound amazing. Yes, that was one of the most incredible trips I've ever taken. Second only to the skiing trip that I took with Greg uh, Barwis uh, uh, to France that one time to go skiing in the Alps, the French Alps. But the Bali trip was amazing because, uh, not only because of the, the other So Bollywood? Uh -huh. No, ho, ho, no, very different. No, Bali is like if you took the Jay, you want yeah, to crash it. Please, please come join. Just for a little bit. All right, Jen, you are welcome to pick up the blue. Um, the blue goes on the right panel, and I got to do is stand side. Blue, the yes. As soon as you see any bump, don't go past it. Okay. The first bump. Yep, Jay. Yeah, if you want, you can look at this real close and see how it goes. Jay, <coughs> you need to introduce yourself to the community. So we're hey, live. Hey, everybody, this is Jay. <laughs> Jay. Jay just graduated from the Art Institute of Austin. I did. With a degree in animation. Animation. Uh, but here at Portolarium, I'm uh, one of the character artists. Yes. So I, I model and uh, do whatnot for the characters. So you make all the cool outfits that we go to wear? Yes. Uh, By the way, the, 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 the new uh, yeah, Admiral, know. what are you calling the outfit? Uh, it's just the Admiral outfit. Is yeah, that great? It's looking, well, doesn't matter. That's <laughs> now. All right, for you diehards paying attention, there's a cool outfit coming. Yes, actually, it's part of Friday's update. Uh, it was going to, but I think we're holding off on it for a little bit. Okay. So for those of you uh, Hearth of Britannia fans, Jay is the person who modeled the Hearth of Britannia cabinet of her shoes, which I appreciate because I was a little picky about it. <laughs> a little bit. Jay was very, very accommodating. How many of these do we have total, by the way? Okay. Uh, not that many. They are very rare and very special. 2,500? <laughs> I, but I do think it's going to take us more than an hour to. Yes, I think so. Actually, it's going to take an hour just to peel off all the. I think the actual total we've uh, we've given out so far, uh, etiquette's 
three. So Hearth of Britannia, which, by the way, I actually don't think we've ever made publicly. Uh, we've never had a public opportunity to say Hearth of Britannia. Uh, they've known that they have one is due. We will. We'll, uh, you wanted to actually paint your own. You said, didn't you? Yeah, I was actually um, wanting to just just do the whole one myself. Yep. Um, and uh, something about green, purple, and pink. On that. Yeah. What? What? Put some other. And then. Uh, and then the Poet Circle and the uh, uh, the College of Arms, and I think that might be it. There's just the three out right now. I think I might have to go go back to my list, and my cheat sheet, make sure I'm not short anybody. Yeah, I don't want Steven screwing mine up. In fact, before I accidentally short somebody, let me just take a look at the list to make sure I haven't which others might have been announced. Be right back. He's higher than the list. It is. It I is. haven't handled a paintbrush in many a moon. What the? He's <laughs> got out of art school. What the hell are they teach in there? It's all about the pixels. It's all about the pixels. Pixel minds. Yeah. So, Jay, it does get easier. There's a meeting going on in my office. I can't go interrupt them. Oh, yeah, you can. That's where I went first, and they looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you mean yesterday? No, no, just oh, now, yes. yeah. No, just for this, just hilarious. now. I heard about. Uh, Bob's prank on you, Scott. Bob's trolling. Yeah. Yes. What a cruel thing to do. I would have been mad. What is Bob? <laughs> Actually, Scotty, why don't you share that with the community? Like, <laughs> it's a good that. story. That's how we keep ourselves entertained. Bob, Bob decided to troll me by by me coming in like from lunch or whatever it was and saying, "Oh, you're you're Hutch wants you immediately in the manager's meeting. They, go ahead and you need to interrupt the manager's meeting because Hutch wants you right now." He had previously warned Andy not to laugh when he said that, though, because uh, Andy is Andy likes to to Andy likes to squeal on Bob when Bob tries to be a troll. So, yep, of course, me being the trusting guy that I am, just simply arms in, and of course not caring that I was interrupting any meeting whatsoever, uh, simply walked into the meeting and said, "Hey, yeah, someone told me I was needed here." They all looked at me like I was insane. No, no, I said, "So you're saying that Bob liked me?" Yeah, Bob lied. <laughs> <laughs> So that's an important lesson to learn. Don't trust don't listen, Bob. Yeah, don't trust Bob. Whatever he says. Mm -hmm. No matter what he says. Is that the lesson? Mm -hmm. It took Richard until himself. I went in there, until I went in there this morning looking for you yes. and said, please tell Scott to come look for me. And Bob goes, I don't think he's going to believe me. <laughs> yeah, and, and truly I didn't. <laughs> it took Richard to come and grab me before I... Uh, it's sort of the Bob the Cred Wolf. The Bob the Cred Wolf. I told him. I warned him. It's like... You know, you've heard oh, you story. know, I've been being so picky careful about making sure I didn't get up on the top of that tape. Now I'm looking at the red. That's, that, you and said I'm, that I did. And I'm sitting here going, wait a minute. My blue is every bit as careful as this red. Exactly. That's what it should be. Okay, just making sure. It has character. It does. It does have character. What do you think I want to do? <laughs> wow. Wah, wah. Okay, let's give him a special one. <laughs> Are you guys going to sharpie it? Let's give him the one without the tape. Yeah, actually, yeah exactly. Actually, I'm, I'm totally fine with that. I was actually going to request the one without the tape uh -huh. since uh, it'd be easier to, because like, that because it's easier to do our assembly line if that one's not part of the mix. So how is it to get off the tape? <laughs> oh, it's going to be torturous to take the tape off. Let it dry well then, so you don't have to. Yeah. Yeah, so you don't worry about rubbing it. This gets to be someone who does silver now. Oh, I get to do more another silver. Mm -hmm. I'm in the middle of yellow, so shall I pass this to you? Yes. So, Richard, I never told you this, but my sister for Christmas to celebrate uh, my first job in the industry. Yeah. She actually looked up your insignia uh, online, saw that it was it was associated with the game, and actually made me a plaque with this insignia on it. Wow. So it like, yeah. Super super. Wow, right that's cool. It's right. hanging up on my uh, in my living room right now. Oh, that's man. very cool. I'm gonna send us a picture back. <laughs> so community. Uh, Get the camera to focus on that, which it isn't. There we Hold go. It. This is the first of the Royal Warrants hand painted by the Portalarium team. Bravo! Yay! Yay. 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 
for his better sister, I would think. And moose wants to bit my sister. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, moose bites can be pretty nasty. No, really. She was carving her initials on the side of the moose with the intergalactic toothbrush given to her by her brother Sven, an Oslo dentist and star of many Norwegian movies. An Oslo dentist? Mm -hmm. Who does not know where that's from? Aww. <laughs> what? Oh my god. So, Monty Python. Monty Python. It's been Holy Grail. Is that the Holy Grail? Yep. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen it too. I'd say it sounds pretty Monty Python. <laughs> so, speaking of silver servant, I recently got a new bicycle that is silver. And I thought, I'm going to name it The Servant. So I decided, because it was the working title for my bicycle was not The Grocery Getter, as it yes. has a bicycle that has a basket on it, which is The Grocery Getter. Right. And last night during D&D, we kept talking about lobsters for some reason. I'm still not... Actually, I know exactly why we're talking about lobsters, but I'm not going to share that on camera. Okay. And um, then <laughs> out of nowhere, someone goes... Hey, I'm a sea witch. Which, you know, out of context isn't that funny, but we were looping at this point. So we just, so I decided that I'm forsaking Silver Serpent as the name of my bike. And since I'm in Texas, my bicycle is now named the Lone Star Sea Roach. The Lone Star what? Sea Roach. Sea Roach as in lobster. Mm. But it was at one point in time, the Silver Serpent. Well, thank you almost. <laughs> wow. I have a funny story about lobsters. The sea roach is so much better. <laughs> oh, well, it's, it's kind of funny. It's also a little unfortunate. Um, for our senior prank, well, the seniors weren't involved in this. A couple of seniors were. They thought it would be funny as th as their prank to uh, buy a couple of lobsters that you know you can get at the grocery store to cook. And uh, a, couple live lobsters. a couple of live lobsters, and then hide them at various places. Oh, gross! No. no. It was uh, still. It, it was unfortunate for the lobsters because they were still alive, and many people found it not very funny. But at the same time, it was rather funny because one of the things they did is they actually put it. You know those uh, vending machines that with ice cream in, in them, and you can oh, yes. and the bottom. You grab your ice cream. Yes. Uh, so they put one in there, oh. and someone reached in and grabbed a lobster and freaked <laughs> out. <laughs> uh, and another ended up, uh, I think it was just in a sink somewhere in one of the bathrooms. It was just sitting in a sink, perfectly happy. Uh, uh, for a while. For a while. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I can't remember what they did the last one. Of they hid it, hid it under someone's desk or on a chair or something. I think they may have put one in the toilet. That would have been funny. <laughs> oh, God. Or sir? horrifying. Yes, sir? Joseph, were you not talking about, were you not, did you not want to speak about lobsters? Were you talking about them because of a particular movie? Yes. Does that particular movie have, like, pseudo puppet heads? Yes. And it's about the Marquis de Sade? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Scotty is also um, psychic. <laughs> Telepathic. Wow. Yes, that movie is gloriously hilarious and horrifying all at the same time. Just remember, everything will go if there's enough butter. <laughs> the moral of the movie. Yes. Hmm. I don't know if I'm happy or horrified. Did I know the this? Answer to questions. <laughs> I have to go look this movie up now. It's simply called The Marquee. Yes. Good old Marquee to say. It came out a few years ago, didn't it? it oh, yes. Recently, relatively recently. But it, came out, it came out, I want to say, like a couple decades ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I think well, a few years years is relative. Yeah. Yeah, when you're my age. Seems like just yesterday. It was the claymation in that which I found also funny. 
a Marquis de Sade movie with claymation in it? Yes, it's called The Marquis. Was it a period movie or kind of a modern spin? It's No, no, it's a period film, but it is incredibly bizarre. It is incredibly French. Yeah. Uh, it is incredibly French. It is incredibly French. And they, mm -hmm. uh, they made a movie where all the characters in it have animal heads. Yeah. They're, they're like really well-made animal heads. It's dark crystal-esque. Yeah. And the Marquis is a dog. I'm going to tell you about, uh, on my honeymoon, we were in this, took my wife to this place called North Island. Very romantic, very remote. And, uh, you know, no, no media. But the little cabana that we had had a DVD player in it. And uh, there were some DVDs there. And one of the DVDs was this French film called Menon de Source. It's like the most famous French film, right? Like it's apparently, yes. Very good. Have you seen it, by the way? No, I've just heard of it. Okay, well, I've never even heard of it. But my wife goes, oh, my goodness, this is the most famous French film ever. Yeah. It's such a brilliant, amazing movie, we just have to watch it. And I'm like, well, okay, why not? Gerard Depardieu, you don't know of it, so, you know, it's supposed to be the most famous French film ever. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be good. So, we put in the movie. I will now tell you the plot of Men on the Source. Uh, Men on the Source is talking about this, 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 this these the old folks who, you know, the community, these villagers who live uh, in this village, these farmers, mostly growing farmer, you know, food and flowers and other things. And uh, and this city slicker moves into town, who's played by Gerard Depardieu. And everybody's making fun of him because as the city, city slicker, he doesn't really know how to farm. And so he's not doing a very good job. But his farm has the, has the, uh, the spring on it. Oh, I've seen this movie. Ah, very good. Well, since his farm has the spring on it, at least he has good water. And actually, a lot of other people don't. And and Gerard Depardieu's character is very hardworking. So even though he's a city slicker, he's constantly reading books. And he's studying up really hard. And you know, every month his farming capability gets a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better because he's trying so hard uh, to to do it. And he's so helpful to anybody else. Anybody else in town needs anything like they're short on water or whatever else, tools or whatever else. He's always helping everybody. He's a super genuinely nice guy. And other people in town generally genuinely don't like him. Uh, and uh, they both make fun of him and they consider him a threat. And to the degree that he finally starts to become successful, they're even jealous now of his success. And he has a wife and a daughter. And as he gains in success, these two people in particular, these scruffy ruffians, who are sort of his neighbors, decide they're going to you know, work against him. And so they go, and they go to his spring, and they cement it shut. And so now, all of a sudden, in addition to having the hearts of a really don't know how to farm very well, he has no water. And, uh, and their plan with these two guys is they're going to basically run him off, buy his land cheap, and therefore uh, be able to you know, take over the nice plot of land that he has. And so Gerard's working hard, working out really hard, working out really hard. He finally finds the place where this thing has been cemented in, and he gets out pickaxes to try to bust out this place where the water's supposed to come out of, and he can't get that out. So he eventually he digs a deep, deep, deep hole. He's almost down there, but he can't get past these last rocks, so he gets some dynamite, and he's going to go blast open finally the, uh, the, 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 the place where the, the spring is, and the dynamite goes off and kills him. Oh. And that's the end of the movie. And that's the end of the movie. Oh, it's wow. That's the bad guys win. Hmm. I'm going like, I'm going like, I'm going like what? This is a horrible movie. Why did you show what, this to me? Yeah, exactly. It's a horrible movie. It's like, you know, what is, the, what, what is the moral to be had here? What is, <laughs> yeah. what is there, what is anything to be had out of this other than, other than what a horrible group of people all the people are? And then, Oh, and oh, and and then make it worse. It's like the uh, the one of the bad guys basically starts courting the daughter. Uh, you know. Uh, oh, George Depardieu's you know, daughter. Yeah, his daughter. I'm going like it gets worse. It's just it's just terrible. It's just terrible. He, he kills off the father. He he gets steals his daughter. He gets the land, etc. And um, what was the moral of the story? There isn't one, but there is a sequel. And uh, and in the sequel, the the daughter basically gets some revenge. Uh, but I'm still, you know, very horrified that the movie exists at all. <laughs> You're baffled by why it even would be attracted to it. Like, what? What? Did you, 
did, did your wife not explain like was there was oh, there a cultural? Great. cultural? She just going like you know American. Well, there is a there. And by the way, I'm 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 exclaiming against I'm railing against it on purpose. Uh, you know, in fact, uh, you know the uh, American movies are so cookie cutter identical of you know good guy always wins that uh, you know perhaps that is a little perhaps we're a little one dimensional in our movie making our storylines. Um, I don't but, know. Watch uh, Million Dollar Baby and tell me that. <laughs> that was a movie I despise for a lot for of several reasons. reasons. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Let's see a French film called Irreversible. I know, but I've heard that it was very good. Yes. Very dark, but very good. Hard to watch. It's a hell of a story. Can you go on that? I really enjoyed the French film called. Uh, it was a. It was Gerard Depardieu. So when you're done with one, you set, set it in the middle, and they'll hand you something that needs blue. Do you need blue? I actually think I need to uh, get back to. Get back to the blue. Well, you can only leave if you send it to somebody else. Oh, I don't know if I can do that. You're you. You have to prove yourself capable. It is four. And if your quest. Four o'clock. Four eleven. Oh, oh, so we're we're, we're up. on. Time's up. Okay, well we're gonna we're gonna definitely don't want any new ones. We'll finish what we've got and then uh, we'll call it uh, call it a day. Good. Bye, Jay. All right, bye, Jay. Thanks for helping. And we can go off air if we'd like and say thank you to everybody for joining us. We'll finish up this round and uh, uh, send out uh, royal warrants to uh, those uh, groups which have earned them. And uh, our thanks to all of you for being members of our community. Our thanks to uh, the the uh, uh, guilds and groups which have uh, earned these royal warrants and we're very pleased and proud to make these, personalize them all for you, for what you do for all of us and for each other. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you, community. Farewell. Joseph, can you figure out how to take us off? Indeed. Thanks, community, for tuning in. Actually, before you do, I want to let you know that we will be back Tuesday, the 1st of July, mm -hmm. for Pen of the Avatar. Don't touch me. Don't. Don't touch me. Touch me. I'm Steve the Don't touch me. All right. See you guys next time. We'll see you Tuesday. Yep. Bye. Bye.